What's going on YouTube? Welcome back Uncommon Sense Fam. If you're new to the channel, after you've taken a look around at my content to figure out if this is the place that you want to be, I want you to do all three. Like, comment, and subscribe. So today I want to present to you guys my top 10 for fall 2020 designer edition. You guys already know what it is. You know what you came here for. We are about to get into that thing. Let's go. Every single day, I'm gonna make something great. That's my way. Every single day, I'm gonna make something great. That's my, that's my way. It wouldn't be a top 10 fall designer list if I didn't go through at least one honorable mention. My first honorable mention is actually gonna be from a house that is discontinuing their fragrance line, Fonda Fendi Peron. It's actually one of my favorites for fall, but I'm noticing it's not performing well lately, but that could be due to a few different factors. One, it hasn't actually gotten cool yet here in Chicago, so maybe I need to wait it out. I was kind of concerned that this one may have went bad, but everything looks the same. And again, I've put some heavy mileage on this one. I've worn the heck out of this fragrance and I don't think it should be going bad, but I've just been noticing it's not lasting on my skin. Quite possibly, it could be something that I'm doing. This has made several lists. It continues to be one of my favorite designer fragrances in my collection. You may ask, what does it smell like? Well, guys, this one is discontinued, so if you have not got your nose on it, it's a unique blend of leathery and spicy. To me, it's the epitome of what I would think would be for fall. Nice pea coat, scarf, bam. Hidden. And it's very gentlemanly. I really enjoy this one. It's kind of in the vein of CH Men Pre Bay. Find the Fanny takes it a little more serious in the direction of spicy. So it's a smidge more spicy. I actually enjoy this fragrance and the spice that it has. I know usually most fragrances for me are gonna be spicy, leathery, or boozy. This manages all three in a very gentlemanly package. If you guys can get this at a good price, I say pick it up. Another honorable mention, Guest Seductive On. Guest Seductive has that sweet, kind of violet accord. To me, this is a pretty good, affordable fragrance. I may have paid $20 for 3.4 ounce, taking a little knot out of it, but I'm looking forward to wearing this one a bit more in fall. It has somewhat of an aquatic nature, but it's balanced out by a very deep, sweet, gourmand type of base. That's all I can really tell in this one. Guess Seductive Om gets billed as a warm, woody, spicy. And all I'm picking up in the beginning is just that sweetness. Actually, I was right. Violet and Amber is what I'm picking up here. That's my second honorable mention for fall designer list. Look what we got on deck. You gotta have us some coffee beans to cleanse the olfactory palette. We're gonna be going through my top 10 fragrances that I'm gonna be reaching for this fall. That in no way, shape, form, or fashion means that I'm not gonna be reaching for other fragrances in my collection. That would be crazy and that would be a lie. And I'm not here to lie to you guys. I'm here to share with you guys my journey. Out of all of the fragrances I own, these reached the top 10. Here we go. Coming in number 10. Burberry London. This will reminds me of fall big time. Trench coat, scarf, messenger bag. This one is woody, spicy. I detect some cinnamon in there. And it just reminds me of rainy days. I really feel like they captured what it feels to be in London. Because every time I've seen things going down in London, it was always rainy or gloomy. The fragrance itself is not gloomy, but the feel of what it feels like to be in a cooler temperature where it's kind of rainy and this fragrance just kind of captures that spicy woody it's alluring though 
So it has a romantic type of feel where it kind of brings you in a little close. Again, that's gonna be my number 10 spot. It's gonna go to Burberry London. Let's get a little sniff. Mm, this coffee smells so good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Coming up to my number nine spot. We got Hannah Murray Hem. Hannah Murray Hem is often compared to Gucci for on two. I don't own any Gucci's and I won't. I talked about that in my live that fragrance houses that have been showing a blatant lack and disregard for people of color and whether it be in their marketing, their hiring practices and all that, I'm not rocking with. That wasn't the reason why I bought this fragrance. I bought the fragrance because I actually enjoyed the House of Hannah Murray. And this one to me embodies fall once again. It kind of reminds me of Apple Jacks on my skin. It's woody. A lot of the fragrances for men in fall are woody and spicy. We get wood and spice, we're supposed to make nice. Hmm. Okay. I may need to try the Eau de Parfum, but we need to work through this one first. So I may be about a fifth of the way in, sixth, something like that. What I get out of this one, cinnamon, woods, maybe a little bit of cardamom. If you can find it for around the $25 range and you're still really building your collection, I think this is a great one to add to. I'm starting to slow down a little bit on buying so many fragrances at once. I've really been buying a lot more discovery sets to figure out if there's anything else out there I wanna go ahead and grasp. I'm in the range of having 120 and 130 full bottles. That's not including decants, that's not including samples, discovery sets, and small atomizers, not including smaller bottles. We're talking about full one ounce to four ounce bottles. I have a lot of those. And what I don't wanna do is have a collection that I'm not really utilizing. I've been finding myself liquidating a few things and giving fragrances away via giveaways. So let me tell you guys this. I was looking through my analytics and I am 10 subscribers away from 2000 subs. I wanna thank you guys so much for giving me the love and support that you've been giving me and the feedback and engagement. I really wanna thank you guys for doing all that you do and showing me the love. I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for that. And I wanna to continue to grow this channel and I can't do that without your help. So tell a friend to have them tell a friend and tell their friends to bring a friend. I upload at least once a week. Sometimes you'll get additional live with me and Dr. Rose or one of my other favorites in FRAGCOM. I want you guys to continue to support me the way that you have been. Leave a comment. I don't ask this often, but make sure that you keep up with the bell so that way you know when I'm uploading hot, fresh new content so that you guys can keep up with me. Drop me a comment below. Let me know if you want to be entered in our 2K giveaway. We're going to be doing it real big for the 2K giveaway, so let me know. Between, we got to cleanse that palette. Mm. Getting high off that. Coming in at a number eight spot. Azaro Chrome Nighttime. Don't see a lot of folks talking about it, but it has an uncommon note of rhubarb. It's very citric in the beginning. And the rhubarb almost comes off like a celery type of note. It's like a sweet celery. And I really feel like the spiciness of this will go very well with cooler nights. I'm definitely thinking October, November, this one's gonna get a lot of play for me. Even though for the most part, we're still on quarantine, work from home type of situation, I usually still spray my fragrances regardless if I'm working from home or not. And another thing, like I was saying, having a larger collection, I did a little bit of math. Having about 120 bottles, would mean I would only be able to wear each fragrance in my collection six times, provided that I've changed fragrances at least three times a day. That's gonna be a bit of a stretch. In order to enjoy them, I'm gonna have to do something a little different. I've actually upped my spray game. I usually do about maybe six or so. I've kind of upped that to 10 for certain fragrances. I haven't had one go bad on me yet. I'm noticing some weaker performance out of this fragrance. And coming up to our number seven spot, we got Look at this presentation. I've talked about this one on several of my videos. I've talked about this one on The Red Kingdom. I've talked about this one in The First Impression. And we're gonna talk about it right now in our Fall 2020 Top 10. Alcantara Banafa for Ubu. Beautiful bottle, man. Middle Eastern perfumer. 
they based out of Saudi Arabia. I got this one online, I think, out of a store that actually is up north Chicago. But I contacted the seller via eBay. This one's from far. It is woody, spicy. The oud in this one is one of the ouds that I actually like. It's the resinous type of oud. I get notes of myrrh, incense, of course, oud. It's a very resinous, dense fragrance that begs to be worn in fog. Folks, this is gonna be one of my uncommon scents. I don't see many folks talking about this one. How many of you folks have heard of this one? Seen it? Smelled it? Let me know, drop me a comment below. Rolling on up to my number six spot. We have Balmain Arm Ferris. Huge blast of sweetness up front. This one performs really well though. I call this one the Big Blue Sweet Beast. This one made my Beast Mode fragrances list. And this one also made Bring Out the Blues list as well. But when you a banger, you a banger. What can I say? You know what time it is. Mm. Also, do me a favor, check out my other videos. Let me know what you think about those. Thumbs up if you like what we're doing. Give us a thumbs down if you don't. And always leave a comment. Let me know what's going on. Now coming up to my number five spot. We halfway through this top 10 list. Damn time flies. But I appreciate you guys for sticking around and checking out my list. My number five spot is gonna go to Mac Velvet Teddy. Fellas, I already know what you're gonna say. But that's a woman's fragrance. It's a fragrance marketed toward women, but guess what? This one, in my nose, is a dead ringer for Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. I had a small sample of Tobacco Vanille. I smelled this one and liked it a little bit more. This one has a more prominent note of honey, which to my nose can just be a little cloying. So I have to wait for this one to settle before I can really start to enjoy it. This one to me also is an uncommon scent for the fellas. I see the ladies have this on some of their lists. And again, what can I say? If it's a great fragrance, I'm not one who is shy to give a fragrance that's marketed to a woman a try. I'm all about fragrance, health, beauty, all that. So if it's a fragrance out there that's typically marketed for the ladies, but it smells good on me, I'm rocking it. I don't give a damn. Coming up to number four, we have another uncommon scent. Velvet Amber Oud by Rihanna. You guys have seen me rave about this one in my Red Kingdom video. Nice Adam as well. It's woody, but it has a barbershop fougere type of feel. It's so clean and dapper. It's intoxicating. The oud in this one is so digestible to my nose. It's not off-putting, but it dries down to have a nice woody masculine smell. Oh, I love this one. What time it is. Cleans out of factory palette. Boom. Coming on up to the number three spot. We got Encre Noir, Alex Storm. And this is an Eau de Parfum concentration from Lalique. This is a new one to my collection. Shout out to Dr. Rose. She actually gifted this to me. She kept saying, you haven't smelled it, you haven't smelled it. Oh my God, I'm gonna send it to you. You gotta smell it, it's so sexy to me. I'll be damned. Shout out to Tyree Beatty as well because he suggested this one along with Encre Noir by Lalique. I did not need that many sprays. I'm gonna tell you that. This is fall in a bottle. Hay rides, bonfires, campfires. When the world opened back up, of course. You get vetiver, cedar, smokiness. I see folks really liking how this one's gonna smell on my brother. Cause that smoky, woody vetiver. And I'm really starting to really enjoy vetiver fragrances along with some of the most smoky scents. Either my nose is getting more developed and I'm getting more accustomed to these smells or my skin just loves them and they really perform. This is so intoxicating. I cannot get enough of this. That'll actually do it for number three for Encre Noir Lux Femme by Lalique. Clean 
Now then. Wanna take a sniff? Hmm. Go ahead. Take a sniff. Okay. Go for me. Coming up to my number two spot is a fragrance that I actually had on my fragrance wish list, but by the time I shot and edited it, one of my folks had already sent it to me. Shout out to Keita Washington, aka Akesia. That fragrance is gonna be Shagaf Oud by Swiss Arabian. Fall, do you hear me? Fall, 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 fall. A lot of folks says this is a direct dupe of Lancome's Oud Bouquet. Never smelled Lancome's Oud Bouquet. I'm gonna tell you what I get out of this one. I get three things. Woods, cookies, cola. So a woody gourmand cola. Mm, so goddamn good. It's a sexy fragrance too. The oud in this one has a slight sharpness. It's like the, the notes play into each other very smoothly. So you get woods, gourmand, cola. Okay, it kind of has an effervescence to it. I can OD off this one, so y'all don't mind me. Talk amongst yourself while I get a little bit of this. <laughs> what time is it? Power time. What time is it? Power time. Okay, enough of that. We've made it to the number one spot. I appreciate you guys sticking around, hanging in there with me, enjoying Uncommon Sense. Okay? Okay. My number one pick for fall designer fragrances for 2020, Moschino Toy Boy. Listen, I have tried my hardest to not be aboard the hype train. I really did. I actually wore it one day when it was like 60 degrees. It was too damn good. The atomizer on here. That pressurized one, you know we like that pressurized atomizer. Like the Dior, like Jimmy Choo, now in Moschino's Toy Boy. <sighs> this fragrance to me is so sophisticated. And especially as a designer fragrance, I'm blown away at this one. This is the Eau de Parfum concentration. In addition to this bottle being just adorable, the fragrance is dope as hell too. That opening with that kind of Dianjou pear. And I'm starting to realize I actually like pear in my fragrances. I'm looking at you, Givenchy, gentlemen. 2017 release. We rock together, you know what I'm saying? Pear, rose. Those are the main stars of this one. But the way that this fragrance is blended and the way that it sits on my skin, it kind of has that niche appeal. As I'm growing in my fragrance journey, I'm starting to like fragrances that are so unique, but smell good on me. And it's hard to get that great balance of good performance, projection, interest and scent, decent price, and exclusivity. It's hard to get all those wrapped up in one. And I really feel like Toy Boy does that. Moschino as a house is one of my favorite houses. And I have the most fragrances from this house. Moschino, they just rock, man. Like. Ah, I love them. That's gonna do it for my fall top 10 2020 designer fragrances list. And I wanna thank you guys for sticking around and enjoying this list with me. Let me know what you thought about this video, these fragrances, what are some of your favorites. And again, it's your boy Uncommon Sense. I love you from the bottom of my heart, the top, the sides, and all the way around. And I'm out. Till next time. All right, y'all. Today, I want to present to you guys my fall 2020 top 10. Look what we got on deck. Let you settle down. Look at all. We get wood and spice. That's nothing. Drop me a comment in the description. Drop. Six spot. That's gonna do so. Boom, here we are with Uncut. Boom. I'm not 
damn lip. Y'all hear these kids playing in the background? I'm gonna edit their ass out. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know if you like what you're doing. Give us a thumb. And that's gonna be. And that's gonna be number.